Hello everyone, welcome to our Saturday study through the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Get your Bibles and turn to the book of Revelation. We're going to be in chapter number five this afternoon. Last couple of weeks we were in chapter four. Chapters four and five represent the beginning of that third section of the book of Revelation that that is prophetic or in the future because we believe that it deals with the time that's beyond even the day in which you and I are presently living. It was when John was called up into heaven, a picture of the rapture, and was allowed into the throne room of heaven and there described the things that he saw and heard. And uh, today we'll be looking at chapter five and we'll see his description and the things that went on about the Lord Jesus Christ being the lion of the tribe of Judah and a lamb as it had been slain. I'll begin reading in Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll and to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. So in these first five verses, we see that the one who sat on the throne had a scroll in his right hand, sealed tightly with seven seals. And no one was worthy to open the scroll, to loose the seals and to open it, to see what was written on the front and on the back of it. We notice that there were seven seals. Sometimes scholars refer to the book of Revelation as being heptatic. That means seven. And there are more times than we can probably count or find or recognize that the number seven shows up in this book. Here we see that there are seven seals. We will see that there are seven spirits of God. Uh, the seven candle uh, sticks or lampstands, the seven stars that we read about in the first chapter, the seven churches that we read about in chapters two and three. And here we see seven seals on this scroll. There will be seven seal judgments, seven trumpet judgments, seven bold judgments, seven thunders of God. It just all kinds of times that we find the number seven that shows up in this book. I also find it interesting that John the Apostle wrote this book. He also wrote the Gospel of John. And in the Gospel of John, we also find seven a couple of different times in that there were seven times that he quoted something that Jesus said, the I am statements, like I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the resurrection and so forth. And there were seven particular miracles that Jesus did that John recorded in the Gospel of John that prove that he was indeed who he said he was. So John's very adept at using this number seven and bringing out God's word to us. We see that he said, I saw. So we're going to be able to see through John's eyes and hear through John's ears the things that he experienced in the throne room of heaven. This seven sealed scroll, there's several possibilities that have been offered about what this scroll represents. Some say it's the book of the New Testament. Others say it's a book of judgment or God's revelation of the purpose of the world. Many have suggested that it's the 
title deed to the earth or the world. And Dr. McGee, in his commentary notes, reminded us of it causing him to think of what Daniel said in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. And that was looking out into the future in a vision that he had. He said, I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the Son of Man coming with clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. To him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. So in Dr. McGee's mind, this scroll representing the title deed of the earth as, as it was uh, presented by Dr. Ironside and many other people is given to the Lord Jesus Christ who will be the one that we discover is the only one worthy to undo the seals and to open the scroll. And so he's been given this title deed of the earth and all things will be given to him. Well, then we see that there's a strong angel that asks, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And John began to weep bitterly or profusely because he recognized there was no one in heaven or earth or anywhere in the universe that was worthy to open this scroll. And then one of the elders, remember we saw the elders the last couple of weeks, and we've determined that the elders represent all of the saints of the New Testament church. And we'll see some other verses in this chapter that give reason for us to think that. But one of the elders uh, came to him and said, uh, don't weep because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, will prevail to open the scroll and loose the seven seals. And of course, that's a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. So now we come to verse number six. And I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. <laughs> There's seven again. Which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So when John looked to see this lion of the tribe of Judah that was mentioned to him by one of the elders, when he looked, rather than saying that he saw the lion of the tribe of Judah, he said he saw a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God out that, uh, sent out into all the earth. That's quite a bit of information. Quite a few more times that the number seven is given to us. What I think I see here is a representation of the Trinity. We have God the Father on the throne. We have God the Son, who is the lamb who was slain, or the lion of the tribe of Judah. And it mentions here the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Seven is a number that's identified with perfection. And I think that it refers to the Holy Spirit of God. So God the Father is on the throne. The Son is before the throne and no longer seated at the Father's right hand. To me, that means that he has stood, no longer seated. And as our high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, as we read in the book of Hebrews, he's getting ready to execute the remainder of this book of the revelation of Jesus Christ, the apocalypse, which means the unveiling or the revealing. And he's going to be the one that orchestrates all of the activities that we find starting next week in chapter six, all the way through the end of the book. And with each one of those things and events that takes place, there's more of a revealing of him and his majesty and his power and authority as we go through those. The horns in scripture always represent power. And here he has perfect power, seven horns. And he has seven eyes that might represent he has all 
understanding and perfect knowledge. And uh, in other words, he's omniscient, like God the Father. So Jesus is taking the scroll out of the hand of God the Father. Pictures God giving to him the authority and the dominion over everything on the earth and in the universe. And it's going to be in preparation for him taking the nation of Israel through Daniel's 70th week and bringing about that time of great tribulation upon the earth prior to him returning to earth and setting up his kingdom. So recall what John said in his gospel in chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, when he was quoting what Jesus had said. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So Jesus has been seated at God's right hand. Now he is standing. He's been given this scroll. We could consider the title deed of the earth and the universe. And he's been given all authority. And he's going to be the one that passes judgment. We read about some additional information from the little book of Jude that one chapter book that's the book just before the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. In verses 14 and 15, something that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied thousands of years ago about this particular time. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He kind of does an overkill on the word ungodly there, but it's an emphasis on the fact that the ones that will receive the judgment that comes from heaven's throne room through the person of the Lord Jesus Christ executing these things will be deserving of judgment. Well, that brings us to verse number eight. And in my study Bible, I have a subheading that says, Worthy is the Lamb. Uh, in our hymnals, we have a song, Worthy is the Lamb. And uh, we, I think of that when I read through these verses and the remaining portion of this chapter number five of Revelation. Verse number eight says, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. You ever wonder what happens to your prayers? I think they're stored up in heaven. And there comes a time when these seven angels will pour out these prayers of the saints and offer them up like incense. It says that the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. You were slain and have been redeemed, and have redeemed us to God by your blood. So this is what the elders are singing, and here's some of those verses that cause us to think that they represent all of the saints of the New Testament church, again, in that they speak about they have been redeemed by Christ. He says, For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So it's not just the Jewish people here. It's people from every ethnic group that you can imagine on planet Earth. And have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. And that represents what even the Apostle Peter has talked about in his epistles, that those who have been saved and trusted in Christ will be made like kings and priests to the Lord. He said, now we see the angels also. So we're going to see these angels mentioned an innumerable number of them, along with the creatures and the elders. 
and they'll be in such number that there are euphemisms here that speak about them being so great in number. And they're going to be singing, Worthy is the Lamb. Verse number 11. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I'll read that again. If you count them, there's seven things <laughs> that this song says that the Lamb is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Seven things. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So every living thing, angels, the creatures, mankind, even the things that are in the sea are going to offer up praise to the Lamb of God the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will be returning to the earth after his orchestrating the events in the next 13 chapters. And when he returns, he'll return as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The elder referred to him as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. John described him as the Lamb, as one who had been slain. And when Jesus returns to the earth after the tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, he'll return as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Verse number 14. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. It's kind of like the final worship scene or the final scene of this great worship service in heaven. And it's to bring attention and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the next thing will be his beginning to open the seven seals. That's what we'll see next week in chapter number six. And it will be the beginning of God's wrath being poured out upon the earth and its inhabitants. We'll even see that there will be war in heaven when we get to chapter 12. And Satan and his fallen angels will be once and for all cast out of heaven, never again allowed into the heavens. So we'll see the beginning of all that in the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as they're referred to, at the beginning of chapter 6 next week. So here we've seen the throne room of heaven. First, we saw in chapter 1, the things in the past, the things that John had seen. Then he wrote of the things which are, chapters 2 and 3, the letters to the seven churches, which represent the church age in which you and I live. And as we look at those various seven churches, representing what I believe to be periods of the church uh, age, as they progress through those, we see the things that the church has experienced since Pentecost. And we find ourselves, if we would write those down on a timeline, to be very near the end of that timeline when the apostate church has shown up on the scene, the church of Laodicea. And it abides at the same time with the true church, the, true, the church of Philadelphia, until the Philadelphian church is raptured. We saw that John was ushered up into heaven at the beginning of chapter 4 that was symbolic of the rapture of the church. And he entered into the throne room and described to us the things that he saw and the things that he heard. And Jesus now has stood up from being seated beside the throne of the Father and has received this seven-sealed scroll, the title deed of the earth. And next week, as he begins to open those seals, there will be seven of them that represent seven sealed judgments. And after that will come the trumpet judgments, and then the bowl judgments, and then there will be uh, information in between those seven judgments that give us more 
uh, information about the things that are going on and the people that are involved in all of those events. So we're getting ready to pick up speed and come to the section of the book of Revelation uh, that begins the tribulation period, Daniel's 70th week, and that's where we'll be next week. So if you want to read ahead, read chapter 6. That's where we'll be next week. Father, thank you for today and for the many blessings you've given. Thank you for your word, how you have desired to share with us things that will be happening in the future. And just as we have seen that the prophecies that you gave in the word of God that have already come to pass happened just as they were prophesied, so we can believe that the prophecies that are yet to be fulfilled will also be literally fulfilled just as you have said in your word. Thank you for those who join us online. We ask for your blessings on them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hope that you have a great Lord's Day tomorrow. Enjoy visiting and fellowshipping with other believers, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, Lord bless you.